So welcome. So today it's a presentation of uh, a variety of digital resources that can be used for the uh, for uh, English as a second language. Uh, and we selected uh, resources that can be used at, uh, at the adult uh, general education clientele, so uh, AGE. <laughs> so Diane. Okay, so for today, um, what, uh, what we thought we would do is go over briefly uh, what our intentions are with you, um, the, the intentions that we have for the, for the webinar, uh, and then to hear your intentions. So think about them in your head, I guess. Uh, we'll talk to you like very briefly about what the, the CNS amount is, what our mandates are, uh, what resources we have that are available using the, uh, the license of Creative Commons. So we have activities, we have learning and evaluation situations. Um, as well, we have uh, pedagogical and professional development resources. So these are um, resources that we used um, in uh, uh, co-collaborations, usually with some school boards. Um, and also we have online courses on Campus to see. Um, we have um, an, uh, a resource that's in French only. Um, it's one of our colleagues that uh, built a website. It's only in French, but not a big deal. Um, the uh, writing process, there's also a brand new website called Better, uh, Better the Web that's up, and we also have a digital uh, direct directory to share with you. So that's all in a nutshell what we're going to do in about an hour. So we might talk a little bit fast. <laughs> so there's a lot for an hour. Um, so uh, for today, our intentions basically were to show you some of the resources, the pedagogical resources that we selected for you. We have a lot more uh, resources that are available, but we did a, a little bit of a pick and choose to, to show you just uh, these, some, um, these ones. Um, keeping in mind that these were created for the, um, the youth sector, but uh, we thought we would present these ones because we thought these ones would be the ones that uh, maybe would be most adaptable to your clientele. Um, one of our other uh, intentions is to create uh, interest to have you further explore the, the resources that we presented and to see if you can select resources that are relevant or pertinent to your clientele. And then <laughs> we were going to do a little interactive uh, moment here, but uh, being as being recorded and uh, we're not uh, live with a lot of people, we we're just going to ask you what your role was and what your intentions were. So just take a second to think what you want to get out of this webinar. And then maybe at the end, come back to that and see if, if uh, you got out of the webinar what you wanted to um, while you were listening. There we go. So this is our wonderful team. Uh, so my name is Sandra Lane and I've been working for the RISI since uh, 2007 now. And I'm glad to be here with the wonderful team, uh, Diane Elizabeth. And uh, Nadia is here with us, but she's, she's just, she's so happy to see us. So she's always uh, following us everywhere. <laughs> so she's I'm a fan. So quickly, we want to know what we want to present. What is the RECI? So we are a network of uh, resource person that are situated across the province. And uh, we have a national RECI. So we are uh, working for the Service National du RECI Domaine des Langues and specifically for the ESL at the youth sector. So our mandate is not at the AGA sector, but like Diane mentioned, a lot of things can be reused and adapted uh, for your uh, clientele. We have the regional uh, sector. I think you, uh, mo you should uh, know uh, your uh, con consultants. They work specifically for the uh, adult sector. And we have the local RIC, which are situated in each uh, service uh, centers. Quickly for our mandate, uh, we work, we produce, share, we promote useful resources that can be uh, used by uh, everyone in the, um, in the educational field. And we promote the integration of technologies uh, for the development of competencies of students. We also provide training sessions, we support uh, teachers, consultants, and we collaborate also with the ministry. So, this is mainly our mandates. <clears throat> so we're here today to present different uh, resources that are available under Creative Commons. Just a quick explanation uh, about what is Creative Commons. Um, 
the Creative Commons are, um, it, it means that it, there's a license. So you're able to take everything that you will uh, see today, uh, make a copy and adapt them to according to your needs. The only thing is that we ask you to keep the attribution and the same license. So you see the license at the bottom of the slide. So you just copy and paste that slide and keep the same uh, attribution, uh, the share alike option, uh, a license, I mean, uh, to uh, the resources that are presented. I don't know if I'm clear, but you can reread the slide <laughs> and you will, I'm sure you're going to understand what it means. Okay, so these are the different activities that we've selected today. So we have a variety, so we're going to go through each of those activities and uh, give you an idea of what they are. So the idea is to think about while you're watching this presentation is to think about uh, your program, what you're doing with students and how it can be reused with your clientele. At the bottom of the slide there, there's a link to all of the other resources. So we have a link underneath all of the images is a link to the resource that we're presenting, but there's also a link to everything else that we have on our website as well. Good. Okay, so the first activity is uh, is called review it. So in this activity, we invite students uh, to share their opinion about uh, something that they read in in a video format. So the intention is to you know the, to write a script and then record their clip and share and invite others to read uh, the book. So to access this present the this um, this activity, you just click on the different links. So the images are linked and you will uh, be uh, uh, on our website and you see the face of our colleague Martin here <laughs> uh, who presents the challenge <clears throat> and you have a different variety of different tools that you can reuse. Um, for example, there's a teacher guide that will show you, uh, demonstrate what you do, the, the different steps of this activity and all the resources are, are available to download from the website. If I go back, so this is the first activity that we think would be interesting. The second one is an excerpt of our uh, Power of One. It's a non-line unit that we did for secondary five students uh, core. And um, so we selected some activities that can be uh, used in a classroom. So if I click here, you will have a, an infographic and you have the guiding questions for each of those activities. So here you have five different activities. They can be done individually, but they can also become part of a sequence. Okay, so for example, what comes to mind when you think about inspiring personal stories? If I click on it, I have a teacher's notes. And at the bottom, you have a version, a Google Docs version, and a Word version of each of those activities. So for if I select one, and you also have the intentions of each of those activities. So it will give you an idea of what they are going to do with it. So for example, in that case, you always have the intention, and you have the, the activity, and different links. So everything is, is, is in one package. So it's easy to share uh, with students, and it can be done uh, in teams or autonomously. So this is one example. And you have all the different five activities here that you can, uh, you can do with them. So we'll let you talk, Diane, now. Okay, so this one is, is called uh, Summer Heartbeat. It's a podcast series that we built um, with uh, Tele-Quebec, um, online Tele-Quebec. I don't know if you noticed on the left-hand side of the screen, we added uh, to the slides what um, which competencies at the youth sector are targeted. So just to give you an idea of what what each uh, presentation that we're giving uh, does. So with um, with Summer Heartbeat, um, it's a podcast that, like I said, that Tele Quebec um, wrote, and it was about uh, two kids. There's a uh, Flora and Xavier, and they have some communication difficulties. Uh, one, well, obviously one is French, one is English, and they're trying to get to know each other, but they encounter all these difficulties because of the language barrier. And so we help them through the podcast. We, we built um, a whole bunch of activities to go with the podcast itself. 
um, to explore language. So um, Sandra, if you want to click on say uh, episode three, and just like um, the would you rather, if you go, uh, go down. So there's a, a presentation. So you have the Google format and you have the, the word format. And there's all sorts of games and um, response process, guiding questions. There's a, a, a student booklet. There's a teacher's guide for every single, every single episode has its own teacher's, um, teacher's guide. Um, and it, I'm not sure if I mentioned free, but it's free. Um, you have to sign up to uh, Tele-Quebec if you want to have the students listen to the podcast, um, it, which might be not exactly age appropriate for your students because the, the podcast itself, we were thinking for secondary one, two, or three, but all of the activities that go with it, or if you actually wanted to get into you know, making podcasts with students, these are uh, uh, excellent uh, tools to go along with. And then there's also in say episode four, we have um, uh, appendix four, there's um, a body bi uh, biography that they can do. So there's a lot of things that, that you can take out of these activities and use for a, a, a different podcast. That's, that's basically it for, for Summer Heartbeat. It was a lot of fun working with uh, Tele Quebec on, on that. So there are eight episodes. Um, they have talked about maybe having other episodes later because apparently the kids that uh, listen to the episodes and do the activities are you know, wanting more and, and wanting to know what happens after, uh, after we leave Xavier and Flora. Um, so that's it for that one. Uh, inferences and predictions. We noticed at some point at the youth sector that um, students were having, not students were having, teachers were often saying the students can't read. So we thought we would build um, a tool to help them uh, infer and predict. So this is a fully functional unit all in itself. Um, so there's a, a Genially, and if you click on the Genially, you go through, it comes to the teacher's guide. So we, we, we walk them through acquiring, connecting, and transferring. Okay, so if you go to, um, I, I don't know, um, any of the steps, there, in each of the steps, if you click on the step, it'll take you to that page. So here we have, um, you're connecting. So there's a video and it's made with um, head puzzles. So the video will stop and ask students questions at the same time. So it's an excellent um, opportunity for a C1. Um, there's also opportunities for C2 in there, C3 in there, and it's, it's it's teaching the student that it's not about a correct answer. It's about justifying their answer. So it, it was a lot of fun. To, there's a lot in there. There's a lot of interesting texts in there, be it uh, video or written texts. Um, so, and, and at the end, we, we suggest multiple ways to reinvest the, the information that they've um, gleaned throughout the texts for other reinvestment tasks. So that's that one. Okay, so again, we're back in the units that we did for the SEC 5 uh, Formation à Distance. So we uh, took out some activities that can be done individually or all in a sequence. So here it's about um, dystopian fiction. Uh, so if you are inter interested in, in dystopia, we have a variety of activities that can be done. So do you know these dystopian stories? Here we have a, a, a breakout game that we created about dystopia uh, and, and so on, okay? So we have, I, I can maybe show you a couple of things that we did. So if you're interested, let's say in Animal Farm, we, have a, we created a summaries of Animal Farm and we compare it with the Russian Revolution. So we have, we created, uh, uh, great presentations that summarizes and makes it a bit more accessible. So you see here, there's a sh short summary of Animal Farm and we included the text and the audio uh, to represent the story. So we have great material to go through. I wanted to show you that one because I think it's it's wonderful. And it's the same thing with the Russian Revolution. If you hear you see it here. And after we make them compare elements from Animal Farm versus the Russian Revolution. So it's quite interesting. Um, so you see here, it's the same kind of visual that was created in comparison. What is interesting with that unit is that when we talk about dystopia, uh, the idea with that, um, that unit is that we want students to be able to compare uh, uh, current events that can be 
that can be near dystopian fiction, you know, that uh, that they don't we don't miss a lot of elements to become dystopia, a dystopia society, dystopian society. So if we go back here, so Diane, you want to present this one? Yeah, this is uh, something that we did, um, was it last year or the year before? I don't even remember now, um, but it was um, something that we did right before Christmas. I think when um, some teachers were online, some teachers were not online. So we created these um, sort of escape rooms that, uh, um, that the students go through. So um, there, there were two, there's one for the first cycle, one for the second cycle. And th we also made some for the elementary level, but we didn't show you the elementary level ones. Um, so it's, um, it's just learning about holiday traditions all around the world. So they go through, they answer some questions and it, uh, hang on. there's a teacher presentation as well up um, further. And so we showed, the, uh, there it is. There's a teacher presentation. There's the proposed sequence that we can go through and, and see exactly um, what, okay. So yeah, it's their mission secondary one and two. This, this teaches that like guides the teacher through the, the actual sequence of um, the activities. Um, we also included a whole bunch of uh, oral interaction possibilities. We included uh, writing and, and text production possibilities. They had a lot of fun doing this because um, it's like the escape room uh, idea. And it gives them an idea um, about what's going on in, in other places of the world because there's, there's some pretty kooky things uh, that are going on uh, elsewhere. So it, it was a lot of fun, and there's a lot of a lot of resources that are jam packed into those uh, few little activities. So, okay, we know it's a lot of information, but you can <laughs> stop the video and just take your time to explore the different resources. Uh, now we have le learning situations. Before we presented some activities, now we are really in the learning and evaluation situations. So we have two uh, LESs. One was created, it's a survivor's journal. So one was created with a teacher uh, and um, it, it's about creating a survivor story. So we're going through, we're going to read different stories of survive, uh, survival and the students will need to create, you know, a kind of a video where they're in sort of like a diary entry in, the, in a video format. And The Boy With A Pass, it starts with a podcast uh, telling a story and there are different activities related to that podcast. But it's very impressive to see the different, uh, the various, uh, you know, resources that you've made available. Um, and especially to see the, you know, the quality with the, uh, the, the graphic work and everything like that. It's really, really, uh, I can see it's really, really uh, well, well done. So uh, thank you so much for making these things available. You're welcome. So you can share them. Huh? If you know, uh, teachers, you know, don't hesitate to send a presentation. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. <laughs> I think I think there are even applications in the English sectors, specifically in CCBE, for a lot of things that can be transferred. I, I've put uh, you into our newsletter that I'm writing as I'm listening. Okay. So, uh, hopefully that we yeah, we can over. and of course, and you know, it's not that much of a, a stretch to go from uh, youth sector to adult education, especially in the same subject. So these are really that, good. That's it. Okay, thank you. And also, uh, we've been collaborating uh, with, uh, you know, Learn, and you sometimes they learn, uh, they, they, they use our resources. It's just the links with their uh, competencies that are a bit different, but it's the same process. Some, you know, learning is learning. So, uh, just sometimes we add a couple of uh, other questions and we can have a, a resource that can be used in the uh, ELA uh, program. Okay, so I'm gonna continue with the uh, different activities that can be done, you know, literature and creative stations. I know that Annie presented those, uh, some of these stations in the, uh, for the Fran Francais Langue d'Enseignement. So we have the same for uh, ESL. We created a variety of uh, stations, uh, either on the iPad or if you you're only at, you only have access to computers, so you have two different documents. So I'm going to open this one for online tools, just to show you a, a new something new. 
So these uh, stations are, uh, so the intention of these stations is to demonstrate understanding in short tasks using books. So students read books and they demonstrate their understanding in creative ways. Okay, so instead of just reading a book and answering questions, we wanted them to demonstrate their understanding differently and uh, go a bit further or change uh, the way we work with students when we ask them, you know, just question and answer. We did this at, uh, at the school board where I worked um, before um, because at that, at that time, there was a lot of teachers that were doing um, reading comprehensions. And so they were doing the demonstration of understanding, but they, they didn't go beyond that. And it was, and it was, it was constantly like, read, answer questions, read, answer questions. And when uh, it was, actually Sandra came to, to my school board at the time and presented it, and it was like, really, really super well received. And uh, a lot of the teachers stopped doing just the, the regular the true false circle the right answer because what you're doing is demonstrating understanding. Why not do it in some different kind of way other than just you know, fill in the blank or, or something. So it was, it was students and teachers alike loved the creative stations. In each of these documents, we suggest different tools that can be used. And, uh, and after you have a variety of tasks that can be, uh, that can be done. So for example, we can, they can create a timeline of important events. They could draw, do a character map. Uh, create a poster to promote a book, create a quiz. So students create the questions instead of teacher creating questions. Uh, they could create an interactive poster. They could code a story. Uh, so retell the events of a story uh, by coding an, in Scratch or something like that. So we wanted them to reuse uh, the information and, and be creative with technology. So this is an example of what it looks like. Uh, you have the intention, and then you have the, the different steps. And we also included some, uh, um, you know, uh, templates that they can reuse if they don't have, they don't want to start from scratch. So uh, you have a variety of uh, elements for each of these, uh, these tasks that you can be using. And I'll uh, link, with, uh, a link with a, a variety of um, online tools. And like I mentioned, there's also the same thing for the iPad. And we always update our presentation. So uh, it should be uh, okay because, you know, tools, they change. Sometimes they become, uh, we need to pay for them. And sometimes, so it's always updated each year or a couple of times a year. Uh, we're done for this section, you know, the activities and pedagogical resources again. Let me tell you that can, you can reuse everything that's there. So you just make a copy, adapt it, just keep the license that we, uh, <laughs> we mentioned uh, at the beginning. So now we're gonna be presenting a couple of uh, pedagogical and professional development resources that you can use. So we won't go through everything like we did for the activities. This is just, in, you know, just information, know that it exists. Um, so we have a variety of online courses that we uh, developed on Campus Rissi. So I don't know if you know Campus Rissi. It's a platform uh, where you can find a variety of uh, online courses that were created by the Rissi uh, um, network. So we have four courses that you can uh, uh, register and follow. Uh, our two new ones are developing your information literacy competencies, and we have producing and sharing podcasts. Uh, one of our popular is planning the integration of technologies in ESL, uh, which is really used a lot, uh, and vocabulary building. If you are interested in reading um, uh, some research about how we can develop vocabulary for English learners. Uh, this one, uh, Diane, would you like to mention it or? This is this is something that um, our, our colleague uh, Martin worked uh, a lot on. So it's a website and, um, oh, hang on. There's, so there's, yeah, hang on, I better move my screen one more. Um, so it, it's basically what works well, like, um, what works well um, in, in, um, uh, in, in language learning. So, um, it's in French, so I mean, I don't think there's a problem for anyone for speaking French, but it's a, uh, um, it's information. Basically, it's a, it's a lot of information um, so that we can 
glean from research. So he, he, he reads and reads and reads and he puts all sorts of information in the, on the website just for us to have um, a one-stop shop for, um, for the research, sorry. The writing process. Okay, so this, um, this is actually one of the newer things that we, we built as well. And it came from a code development that we started at uh, the school board where I was working as a CP. Um, because uh, we started talking about uh, giving effective feedback and then we realized that teachers um, didn't really have a, a grasp over the entire uh, writing process that uh, in our program, because in the program itself, we have give feedback and students should seek feedback. But um, so we, 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 we did a, hang on, let's take a little minute break here and go back through the writing process because we were noticing even that teachers tend to say, okay, go revise and edit your text where those things are two distinct things. So we, we made this presentation that um, Sandra's sharing now um, to show where the, pro, uh, where the program says the, the writing process starts from elementary through cycle one, all the way through cycle two. So what looks common in it um, and where feedback um, should, should come, why it's important to brainstorm. And these things aren't things that you either choose to do or not do. These things are actually in the program. So we should be doing them. And then underneath where Sandra just click, uh, clicked, this is, um, we, we, we provided tools that, um, that we thought that would be useful. You know, so when students are brainstorming, you know, they could use a dark whiteboard, a collaborative whiteboard. You know, we could use um, semantic mapping for, um, uh, you know, activating prior knowledge. And um, so we, there, there are lots of, of different tools that we can use online. So because it's the SC, they're all uh, online tools um, so, and free. Um, online tools that can be used to help us through the writing process. So in each phase of the writing process, we have the um, sort of the overview of what it looks like from elementary through to uh, second cycle secondary. And then below that, we have the tools that, um, that can be used um, online with students to help them with that. It's something that's really important because we find you know, a lot of teachers are saying that, oh, students, they never write their draft. Well, they're never going to write their draft unless you go through the writing process with them, unless they see the advantage of writing a draft. When they have feedback on their draft, when they have feedback on their um, uh, on, on each of the phases of their the, the writing process, when the student sees the adva uh, the advantage of it, that's when they'll actually go through and um, and get it done. And so there you go. Good. Congrats. So uh, Nat. I think we're uh, almost uh, at the end of our presentation. So we also have a new website. It's called uh, Balado Web. So if I click on this link, so it's um, a joint project with uh, BINQ and uh, RICI. So we created this website where uh, we invite students to uh, upload their uh, creation, their podcast on a map of Quebec. Um, it's free. Uh, the idea is to produce a podcast. So remember, we've talked about a new online course that is called Producing and Sharing Podcasts. So we have all the material in that online course to produce a podcast. And the platform is there to uh, give uh, a voice uh, to students to highlight their productions. And here you have a few... Um, productions that are already available. Uh, you have a few in English by, done by ESL uh, students uh, in the region of Lac Mégantic. So there are, a few in, there are some in French, some in English. You zoom in and you have access to the different podcasts. And through the menu, you have also a variety of resources that you can access. Uh, so you have different pedagogical content and different suggested tools, uh, activities, and uh, links to our online courses. I think it's the, our last slide. We also created two uh, uh, database directory of different tools to enhance learning. So we created the, a database where you can select uh, the category uh, of the writing, you know, the, the steps of the writing process and the category of the tool that you want. And uh, uh, they are all, um, how do you say it? Um, indexy. <laughs> so we looked at each of these tools and we added to our website. 
And the other one is a list of a variety of interesting tools that you can use for anything that you want to do in ESL. There you go. This is us. To the end of our presentation. presentation of a, a few years of work in Athens. This is what we did in, in September. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for this presentation. It was very, very informative. Um, you are superstars. <laughs> and uh, I really suggest that uh, people go and have a look at the presentation, go onto your websites because you have several. <laughs>